Oh, glory to God. Inspiration and revelation. I am Kim Warner with KIMR 94.5. Um, we have a nonprofit organization, Interfaith Wealth Builders, that goes out into various communities throughout the world and help uh, assist people that are in need. Um, funding um, is needed always because we generally go into our pockets and do the work that we can do through our resources. But we're looking for venues and people that can help us with resources. So, you know, I was thinking on um, uh, the scripture in John where it says, I and my father are one. And, you know, I've been meditating for a couple of days, just thinking over some things. And, you know, you're sometimes in a place where God is um, provoking you to go to another level. Some things in people you don't want to leave behind. And because of the emotions attached to the things, the places and the people, um, you don't want to let them go. But can I tell you that when you sit down and you actually listen to God, and I know many people are out there listening and saying, well, I do hear God and I do listen to God and that's great. But I find God to be from level to level and glory to glory. And so in that level to level and glory to glory, what we find is, is that God is saying deeper things to us because he's calling us into uncharted territories. You know, like he called Peter out into the deep. Oh, God, we thank you for revelation and wisdom and knowledge. And we thank you for discernment, you know. And so. Sometimes our discernment, we think, is God's, but it's not. Sometimes the choices that we make, we think it's God, but it, it, it was not. It was ours. And so we have to become aware of the choices and who's making the choice through us concerning our life and where we're going. So um, as I was saying, John, uh, I think it's in six, um, Jesus talks about around the 40th um, verse I'm turning to it now, how um, no one can come to him unless he is sent from the father or she is sent from the father. And so um, when we look at that, of course, he was talking to the Jews because um, the Jews were trying to uh, and the scribes, they were trying to understand him and where he was coming from with his words. Uh, but they, you know, they did not know that. um you know, he was coming from God. His words were coming from God. And so um, I'm tr I'm turning to the page. I had got excited, you know, when it, it, it came over me. And it's not that, you know, you just go and you divulge all information. But if the revelation, if it um, sat in its place like it did with me, and I have been uh, meditating on I and my father is are one. And um, I am my father. I want because I want the truth. All right. So I don't want to just go around talking to people about um, the Bible, the scripture, and just be satisfied with what the scriptures have said without going deeper into the word. Because he said the letter killeth, but the spirit brings life. And they that worship me in spirit and truth, you know, that's where God is, is in spirit and truth. And so when the spirit brings revelation to you, you want to shout down the mountain and tell people about it. So um, in John 6 and 41, it says at this, the um, Jews began to grumble about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say I came down from heaven now? Um, you know, let's relate this to family and people around us while we're going through some persecuting times that they see us as human beings, but they don't see us as spiritual beings. Um, they might see um, the equipping of the saints. They may see prayers being answered, you know, because of that. But at the end of the day, they still are family members and people that we grew up around. They still see us um, as Mary and Joseph's children, okay, the earthly um father and mother, not the heavenly father, so anyway, going on uh the wonderful thing here is it said um forty three six and forty three stop among yourselves, Jesus answered, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets. 
they will all be taught by God. But I want to go back because he says, no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up at the last day. So, you know, I, I was doing some work and my mind was on, I and my father are one. And, you know, I began to hear the spirit and see a mirror dealing with me. And he said, okay, so why why would we worry about um, clients? Why would you worry about your business not working when I send every person that is a mirroring effect to you? So in essence, God sends to you um, people that are a part of who you are, just like the 12 disciples. All of them had a piece of Jesus in them. They had not come into the totality of Jesus, but he had picked out each disciple so that each disciple would represent a part of who he was. John was love. Peter was based off of faith, you know, and, and going on. But the, the thing about it is, is that he mirrored 12 people and they were 12 people that had a heart after his. And so God began to send him and to make the choices of who those 12 would be. Now, when we look at this from a business standpoint or even ministry standpoint, when we look at it from our house standpoint, sometimes people got to leave and some people are coming because we are changing every hour of the day, every minute of the day. I mean, we could go back and study that part. But the thing about it is, is that at this point in time, maybe things are supposed to be the way they are. Maybe it looks like you're not moving in something. Maybe you don't have the overflow of clientele that you did because you're in an isolated season. That's the transition you're in. Maybe God has put you in isolation so that you can learn and there's not but a few people around you. Okay, so then our minds and our hearts have to receive that. Whatever is happening, God is doing it. We can't fight it. We can't retaliate against it. We can't get angry. We can't get bitter because it's a season and a time. And in that season and time, that season is seasoning us for maturity. All right. So looking at the mirror, I said, well, you know, starting new businesses and I'm, you know, um, looking at things um, a certain way. Well, what, well God, what, how would you have me to look? And he said, see the people that I send to you coming. Amen. See the people that I send to you coming because you're a mirroring effect of your business or your clients or the people that follow you. The people that follow you will have um, the need for the services that you have, the services of relationship, the services of family issues, the services of family relationships. They will need um, service to understand that they can come out of poverty. They will need to understand that that divorce can stop in the midst of uh, the current uh, situation. They will need to know that separations are not always forever, but it's for something that they need to understand or that they need to learn. And I said, God, you are a wonder worker. Work in me, Jesus. I said, work in me because how many people actually see that we are a mirror effect of people, everybody around me and those that have mentored under me. I could see that they are parts of who I have been and who I'm coming to be as well. And so what God is saying to us and what he said to me in that is be patient with yourself because I am doing a good work and I'm doing a good work that I will complete. We have to get I ourselves out and let I am complete us. I saw those people coming and I see the businesses for you coming. I see the prosperity for you coming. I see the healing for you coming because it's visual. You know, when the, when the, when the person is ready to receive the blessing, they'll be able to see it because God works in our thoughts and in our hearts is breakthrough on the agenda, but the breakthrough has to happen in us. Walls and hindrances cannot come down until we decide to let them down. We have to stop looking outside of ourselves for things and begin to look within. Again, I always talk to my people about, I talk to my people about there's no blame game. We're accountable. It doesn't matter if you were an orphan, you're accountable. You know why? 
Because even though your parents left you, your spiritual parent has never left you. He walks within you and talks to you daily. He, if you call it a she, but the Jesus, the God in you, the authority in you, the Lord in you, it walks and talks in you every day. So there's no losses for us unless we get stuck at a place that says, I can't. And who says we can't? Well, we know that we can do more things through the God within us. We are greater, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. The conqueror lives. In. How can we lose with the stuff that's in us? Reverend Ike used to say, how can we lose unless we fix our minds on being a loser? He got to question yourself. Question what you really believe about the scriptures. Because I tell you that the word, it lives and it moves. And the word has taught me that it will test you for your testimony. People talking about the devil and the energy. What about the the enemy within us? The energy that we put out, the negative. Can we just come into alignment with ourselves and take account accountability for? Oh, you know what? Be real. You feel like you can't make it in that situation. But with God, when you take on a new level of God, for greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And from level to level and glory to glory, there is a conqueror that's going to reside in you and want you to pull it up through prayer and through worship. There's a greater part of you that says he's a conqueror from level to level and glory to glory that's going to ask you and require you to work with that. And come out, come out, I say, of the graves. Ye that sleepeth, awaken into the word of God. Ah, let the spirit of the Lord speak to you through the spirit of the word. Hey, the letter, the letter kills, but the spirit of God, it brings life, it brings wholeness, and it will bring the people that you need for your ministry, and it will bring people that you need to grow again, and it will be Bring people that you need for your business. It will bring money to you. That God within you, the spirit of life and truth, and that breakthrough in you that you need to silence the enemy within you, to silence the words within your mind. That same God that Jesus talked about, he said, hallelujah. In John, John, Urabasikonda. Oh, my God, I said, when all of the people were growling and grumbling at him, oh, Baba Shikande, he said, no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws them. I yellow by loving kindness. Have I drawn thee? By loving kindness, because love kills a multitude of sin. And I want to say thank you, Jesus. Hey, I want to thank thank you, Jesus, for my mind. I want to say thank you, God, for working in me, for, for, for revelating through me, for wisdom and knowledge that pouring through me. I want to say thank you, Lord, for choosing me. I want to say thank you, Lord, for keeping me when I can't keep myself, keeping me from the miry clay, keeping me from uh, the sinking waters. Oh, God, thank you for lifting me up from a place that I've been. Oh, God, and taking me higher, higher, higher in the name of Jesus. And God, bless your people. Bless your people. Bless them with your anointing. Bless them with your anointing to destroy the yoke of the enemy. Bless them, God. Bless them. Bless them in their prayers. That their prayers will be open. Oh, God, in the portals of heaven, will bless them indeed. In the name of Jesus. Bless them with transformation and change. In the name of Jesus. Bless them with the blood of Jesus. Bless them with... Glory to God, the, the commitment to be a changed person in your word and through your word and give testimony of your word in Jesus name. Set them free. Let the spirit of deliverance come. Set us all free in Jesus name completely. Hallelujah. 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 And so you can go to our site and look at what we're doing. If you need transformation sessions, I give those. Um, you can go to ifwbuilders.com uh, and read about the testimonies. You can also go to www.kimwarner.com and read about what we're doing in communities. Um, there is a 
um, activity, well, not activity, but a birthday celebration, special needs prom that's coming up on March the 6th in California. And so we will want you to um, look into that if you're in the Calabasas, Los Angeles area, Westlake, um, you know, and, and you can um, even email us about it or get the information off of both of the sites. Um, it's going to be um, held by Inclusion um, Clubhouse with uh, Lisa Batiste. Batista's uh, Hall and her um, conglomerate or her uh, organization, I should say. All right. And so look into that and remember that, you know, donations are needed for interfaith wealth builders because we help with other partnerships um, like Lisa's. I meant Linda's, I'm sorry, like Linda's. And um, so uh, Linda Hall is her name. And so you want to reach out to her at inclusionclubhouse.org. Um, they have donation um, and funding um, care force um, on the site that you can help out with that because they are in need of that. And so we want to bless you and thank you um, for uh, your thoughts towards us. Pray for us. Um, pray for our growth. Remember our radio station, KIMR 94.5. Keep it moving. Moving radio is for the people that love God, and um, it's not against anybody because everybody's included. That's why we're out there to call the people in, you know, to keep that evangelism moving movement going. And so we love you in the Lord. We bless you. My name is Kim. Look into my transformation classes, and it is well in Jesus' name. Amen. <music>